The purpose of this video is to describe the donor protections and support available through the Donor Shield program. In this video, Ned Brooks, founder and CEO of the National Kidney Donation Organization, and Garrett Hill, founder and CEO of the National Kidney Registry, discuss the components of the Donor Shield program. Both Ned and Garrett are living donors. So, Donor Shield is a suite of protections and support. Uh, there are eight different uh, protections. The first two are probably the, the ones that are top of mind uh, to donors. Uh, the first is reimbursement for lost wages. We'll reimburse up to four weeks of lost wages for up to $1,500 a week with no income restrictions. You know, any donor can apply and, and be reimbursed. The second one is travel and lodging reimbursement. So we reimburse uh, generally hotel, mileage, stuff like that, up to $2,000. Um, and what we have been doing recently is encouraging people to, instead of fly to a distant city to donate, donate at a center near your home so you don't have to stay in a hotel for a week after you donate your kidney. So what we're doing is we're, we've got a, a remote donation program where if you have a friend or a loved one that lives in a distant city, you can donate here uh, and we'll ship that kidney to the distant city. Or better yet, you'll donate through the voucher program. We'll find the best match for your kidney and we'll pass the voucher to your friend or loved one who will then redeem the voucher and we'll get a kidney, a well-matched kidney for them. Um, the next two are the insurance products, life insurance and disability insurance. Now, life insurance, it's a $500,000 principal amount. You get it automatically if, you if you're covered by DonorShield. And thankfully, we've never had a case, right? We're at uh, four or 5,000 transplants now, and we hope we never have a, a life insurance uh, case. Uh, the disability, we've had just a very few. Um, and uh, the disability uh, policy covers uh, I think it's up to $1,500 uh, a week for 52 weeks. If you have a complication, you can't go right back to work. Like I said, we've had very few of those. I think maybe only two. Uh, then we have um, uh, a, a protection that uh, it's called, we, we give coverage for uncovered complications. What does that mean? Um, so let's say you donate and your kidney is, goes to California and then six months later, because you donated, you end up with a hernia. That's one of the, the complications we see. It's very rare, but it happens. Um, uh, but the patient that received your kidney in California had private insurance, and the private insurance company cut a deal with the hospital to limit coverage for complications after 90 days. Well, now you don't have co you the donor don't have coverage, and and so you'll probably go to your own insurance. But we don't think that's right. We think that the donor should be completely taken care of, and this came about because we actually had a case. It was a non-directed donor donated their kidney. Um, three months later, they had a hernia, and the hospital wanted to bill the donor $25,000 for a hernia. First of all, that's way too much, right? You know, it should be like 5,000. We stepped in, we said, whatever, we're taking care of this. We're not gonna let that donor, you know, get kind of hit with this big medical bill because the recipient center made a deal with the insurance company that limited uh, the, the donor complication coverage to only 30 days, right? So that's a pretty tight window. Um, and so we, we went to work way back then. Uh, we, we took care of the situation. That donor was, was we paid for the, actually, turns out the patient uh, at the recipient center had Medicare as secondary coverage, and that covered it. But we had to dig for a while to even find that. But we were taking care of the donor. So we put a program in place called Coverage for Uncovered Complications. Uh, we charged a small fee uh, to transplant centers who had patients with private insurance because that's where the problem, Medicare right. does a great job. It, it's the private insurance that have the, they have these termination dates for coverage. Um, so we now have, I think the last time I looked, uh, $1.2 million in an account uh, for donor complications. We pay out claims routinely um, and it's now a, a network-wide uh, thing. So no donor is, is put in a position where they have to, uh, you know, find money to pay for a complication after the fact. I think that's a very important protection, one that doesn't get a lot of attention. Uh, so that's number five. Number six is legal support. Uh, so we have an attorney on retainer. Um, 
And we, we did that originally because we were concerned that donors might lose their health insurance once they donated. Amazingly, after 4,000, 5,000 uh, donations, we haven't seen one case where the donors lost their health insurance. Very rare. Uh, and in fact, we don't even know if it's ever happened. Um, however, we have seen donors fired from their jobs because they legally took time off to donate and the employer didn't appreciate that. Um, in our first case, uh, we've, had, we've had two cases now, again, very rare, because most employers are, are sympathetic and, and very supportive to donation. Uh, but uh, we brought our, our lawyer in and we filed suit and we won. The lawyer did not want to take on uh, this, this battle uh, because it's just a, it's a bad look for the lawyer and there's no way they're going to win. Um, so we, we step in when a, a donor needs some protection from, uh, we'll call it unlawful termination. And, and it's also there for anything else that may come up. But those are the two that uh, we've thought about. Um, if somebody has a complication, we're protecting them, first of all, for the medical procedure, if the insurance company is not doing the right thing. And then second of all, uh, we're, we're covering their uh, lost wage and also their travel and any lodging. We had a case, uh, I remember it was... A couple years ago was the first case. This is how the, we start with these protections. We have a center who calls or a donor who calls and said, look, this is my problem. Uh, this donor was, I think, a school teacher and uh, she had some complications. They went away, but she had to take some time off work. And, you know, she actually didn't want to be in re We found out about this case and we said, well, you gotta be reimbursed. You know, she wasn't looking to be reimbursed, but it's just wrong. You know, if a donor donates a kidney uh, and then they have complications later, uh, they shouldn't have to, you know, carry the burden of lost wages or in this case travel and lodging. So that actually that case started this this protection. And then I think that's that's protection seven. And then the eighth protection is one that that I get hit me personally after I donated. Um, I uh, I went out to acquire some more life insurance and um, I had bought a life insurance, term life insurance policy before donation, so I had a pretty recent kind of price comparison. And then when I went out to buy it, you know, to up it later on, the price doubled. <laughs> it's like, wait a second, you're penalizing me to, because I'm a living donor. And um, that's, that was, that's a fact. And the person who I was dealing with, they, they had shopped the plan to, I don't know, six or seven insurance, national insurance companies. And it comes down to where they set the creatin cutoff, right? So they were setting the creatin cutoff, I don't know, maybe at 1 or 1 1.2, something like that. Well, you and I both have creatins over 1.0. Um, but uh, uh, good news is one of the national insurance companies, a big player, reconnected with us. And, I'm, uh, you know, this is like a year later, and they have upped their cutoff. Uh, so that kidney donors can qualify for preferred rates. And so if that works out, um, we're going to probably uh, connect any donor, you know, from our website into this uh, capability uh, to get this insurance. Now, there's also, um, I think, a dozen states around the country who have outlawed price discrimination against living donors. And so we're also keeping an eye on that, putting that on the website so that donors are fully informed about life insurance. Um, life insurance is a problem, and I think we have a solution now.